All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Boyle. I'm a senior assistant director at Boston University. I'm very excited to have you here with us today. We're going to talk all about what it's like to apply to Boston University through the early decision program. And later, we're going to have two special guests come on. They are current students who actually just applied through early decision last year. So please start asking your questions now. We're going to go through all of them. We're going to have our students answer the questions. I'm ha happy to answer any questions that you have as well. But just to start things off, um, Boston University is the fourth largest private university in the country. We have 10 different schools within BU. So everything from the College of Arts and Sciences, which is our main liberal arts division, to professional based programs like the College of Communication, the College of Engineering, and we even have a fine arts program, the College of Fine Arts. When you apply to Boston University, and this is something we'll talk about in just a minute, you do pick one specific school to apply to within BU, and that's also where you'll do everything like filling out your BU essay, filling out the early decision agreement, and one important thing to know and to start considering when you're asking your questions is that BU is located right in the city of Boston. We are a residential campus. There's a vibrant student life, almost 500 different student activities groups. We're a division one school, so we have 24 varsity sports, but we also have things like club sports, intramural sports. We have an amazing arts community on campus and lots of different things to explore like study abroad, internships and research. So with that, I'm just going to take you through uh, a couple of really important things to know about the early decision process. So if you're here, I assume you're thinking about applying early decision to BU. And as you can see on the current slide right here, our campus is just along the Charles River. And you can see Boston University, you can see that little triangle right there. That's a Sitco sign. That's a big Boston landmark. And that's at one end of our campus. So BU is basically a big rectangle right in the city of Boston. As I said, we're residential, so our dorms are right on campus too. And it's important to note that when we're reviewing applications, we take a holistic approach. So really what a holistic review means is that we're taking into account everything that you're sending us, everything that's required. So we're looking at what you've done within your high school. Have you challenged yourself? What your grades are like? What your standardized test scores are? But also really important aspects of who you are, what you like to do, what your extracurricular activities are. Um, you know, what do your recommendations say about you? Who are you in the classroom? Who are you in your school community? What do your essays say? How interested are you in Boston University? So there's a lot of factors that go into making an admission decision. And that's why we use a holistic review, because it enables us to take absolutely everything into account and really make the best decision about who's going to be coming to Boston University in the fall as a freshman. So this fun slide, it'll get fun in just a minute. It represents all the different applicants that we have. And so when we're talking about a holistic review, it's really important to know that we have students applying from all over the place. Last year, we had students apply from 166 different countries. And so you can imagine that applications look pretty different depending on where the student was coming from. Even within the United States, we had students apply from all 50 US states, but also US territories. And so that's where we use our regional expertise you know, it's my job to get to know the schools in my area. For instance, I travel to northeastern Massachusetts, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and also Queens, New York. So I get to know the schools in my area that helps us review the applications, get to know the transcripts, get to know what's offered in your area, because it is going to vary. You know, a student who's taking something like an international baccalaureate program doing the diploma in uh, a country outside the U.S. is going to be a little bit different from someone who's maybe pursuing advanced placement courses within the U.S. And so that's why, again, we use that holistic review process. And this is really just a nice snapshot to give you an idea of some other things that go into the application process. We want BU to be a place that all students can see themselves. We want BU to be a diverse place. We want BU to be a, an inclusive place. And so that really means having people from all different backgrounds from all across the country um, and also very often students who might be the first in their family to go to college. And so it's important to us that Boston University, our student body, really reflects what it's like uh, to be a citizen of the world, because that's really what you're going to be, not just when you're here on campus, but also when you graduate, when you move off campus, when you do things like studying abroad, when you do things like internships or get a job after graduation. Our class size is about 3,300 students for our freshman class. So our first year students apply through two programs, either early decision or regular decision. 
early decision, you have two options. You can apply early decision one, the deadline for this year passed on November one, but we have early decision two. So if you know that Boston University is your first choice, it is a good idea to start exploring early decision. What early decision is, is a binding program to apply to BU. What it means is that Boston University is your first choice. If you're admitted to Boston University, you're going to attend BU. You sign an early decision agreement, you sign it, your parent or guardian signs it, and then your counselor or advisor signs it. And really what you're saying is that if I am admitted, I plan to attend. And so that's how early decision is different from regular decision. It's also different from early action. Early action is non-binding and BU does not offer early action. So one of the benefits of early decision is that it is a smaller applicant pool, but it makes up a great percentage of our class. Last year, we had 38% of our students apply early decision. And as you can see, we also have students who apply to BU as transfer students. So not just coming in as first year students as freshmen, we have students starting all different times um, here at Boston University. It's also good to know for early decision that we do have a smaller applicant pool. So as you may have seen on that slide a little bit earlier, our total applications last year were 64,473 students. That's early decision one and two and regular decision combined. If you look at the early decision slide here, you can see that last year we had just over 4,000 students total apply for early decision one and early decision two. So it's a nice small pool where you can really stand out you're committing to BU, you're saying that Boston University is your first choice. We are a school that looks at demonstrated interest, so that can work out in your favor. Students do still have to be academically competitive, you have to be a great fit for Boston University, but applying earlier means you find out earlier, but it also means that that holistic review that we're taking into account, we're really able to make the best choices for who we want to have on campus with us in the fall. And for you guys to, to be thinking about, our recommended high school curriculum should look pretty familiar if you're a student at a US-based high school, but you can see we have that asterisk there that says international curricula might vary. So one of the things that I mentioned earlier, the International Baccalaureate Program, you might have coursework that looks a little bit different from this. If you're a student pursuing A-levels, it might look a little bit different from this. And that's why it's a recommended high school curriculum. And again, that's why we look at the holistic review. We try to get to know you within your individual high school environment, what you've done to challenge yourself, and how hard you've worked in high school. It's important to note that there will be some schools within BU, for instance, the Questrom School of Business and the College of Engineering that might have slightly different math requirements. Calculus is required if you're applying to the Questrom School of Business or the College of Engineering. And as you can see for the rest of our programs, we recommend reaching pre-calculus or calculus. Again, International curricula will probably vary, and we get to know you based on the school that you're coming from. Deadlines are very important to pay attention to, and one of the things that is important to know is that your application for admission will be the same deadline as your application for need-based financial assistance. So need-based financial assistance really takes into account things like the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and the CSS Profile. Boston University requires both of these documents in order to have a complete aid application. So make sure you're submitting all of your requirements, common application, your high school transcript, your standardized testing scores, your recommendations, all of that along with the CSS profile and the FAFSA if you intend to apply for need-based aid. As I said, you get to know a lot earlier too. We tell you by February 15th if you've been admitted early decision. And we also offer regular decisions. So at the end of the night, if you have questions, like I said, keep asking questions right now, but always feel free to email us anytime you have questions and then consider regular decision as well. So if you're not quite sure, you're still making up your mind if BU is your first choice, regular decision is a great option. And it's the same deadline, including the same financial aid deadline as our early decision too. It's really important to consider whether or not a school is a good financial fit. And how you do that is making sure that you're applying for everything that you're eligible for. So make sure that you're applying for need-based financial assistance, um, because that is where Boston University offers the most financial assistance. Last year, we gave out over $240 million in financial aid to our undergraduate students. That's the vast majority of the money that we give out. Um, and as you can see, we do have generous financial aid packages. It's going to vary family by family. 
um, based off of how much your family might need. Um, but it's a good idea to be applying and making sure that you're hitting the deadlines for not just admission, but also for financial assistance. And so with that, I'm just going to have our students come up and share their experiences with you. So I see lots of good questions coming in right now. Very exciting. Um, so I'm going to invite our students to come up. We're going to start taking questions and just see where we go from there. Okay. Awesome. Okay, student. Perfect. Okay. So we have our two students here with us. Would you guys mind introducing yourselves? Yeah, so my name is Mariano. I'm actually a freshman in the Sargent College of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences. I'm studying human physiology and hope to minor in public health, and I'm from California, from SoCal. Hi, my name is Lisi. I'm a freshman in the College of Arts and Sciences, and I'm majoring in Spanish. Um, I'm from Harvard, Massachusetts, which is about 45 minutes from BU. Ah, and so we have our first question. It's a good question. You guys, what is your favorite BU tradition so far? Do you have one? You've been on campus for a semester. What's your favorite tradition? Um, okay, so my favorite tradition is Splash. So at the beginning of school year, um, BU puts on um, this sort of event on our field on campus where all the club, the different clubs on campus go out and promote their different club. So I went there with my friends and signed up for all these clubs and went to their meetings and it was a great way to sign up for some extracurricular activities. And also I met a lot of friends through the clubs. So my best friend now, I met her through going to one of the clubs I went through from finding out at Splash. And now we're best friends. I even went home with her um, for Thanksgiving. So it was really fun. So I definitely recommend if you're a student on campus to go to Splash. Cool. Do you have a favorite tradition? That was also my oh, favorite okay. tradition. So my favorite tradition, even though I'm not a Boston University student, is the pumpkin drop that's sponsored by the physics and engineering department every single year. They drop pumpkins off of one of the towers on campus. It's very safe. Everything's blocked off. But it's a nice, fun Halloween tradition. They get to test out gravity, makes a big mess. They live stream it every year. Uh, so it's a lot of fun to see. So our next question is, how does the campus feel being so close to downtown Boston? You know, BU really is an urban university. So what does that city environment feel like? Maybe Lisa, you can go yeah, first. Sure. Um, so one of the things that I found being a BU student is BU has its own campus um, that even though it's in the city, it is separate from the city. Um, but it, what's great about it is you can jump on the T, which runs right on through um, campus and go pretty much anywhere you want in the city. The T will take you anywhere. So you can go to different museums. I went to visit the aquarium one time. Um, so it's I would say it's pretty great. For non-Boston natives, what is the T? Oh, that's a really great question. <laughs> so the T is basically the subway system, runs all through Boston. There are, um, I think, five different lines you can take. Great. Did you have anything you wanted to add about Boston? Because you're not from the Boston area. Yeah, sure. So one of the things I really liked about Boston University that drove me to apply early decision is the fact that it is very in the city, but you get the best of both worlds. Like um, Lisi was saying, it's you still feel like you're on a campus. You don't feel like you're. it's just the city all around you. So while you do feel like you're in the BU um, bubble and a really great surrounded by all these students, you do get to take the T or even walk a few blocks and you'll be in Fenway. I can see um, Fenway Park from my dorm. So it's the city's definitely close, but you still definitely still feel like you're at a, call, um, a campus. That's a really great transition to the next question that popped mm -hmm. up. So as I mentioned earlier, earlier, BU is a residential campus. We guarantee housing for all four years, and freshmen are required to live on campus. So since you mentioned your dorm, and we're going to ask Lisi too, um, well, how did you find your roommate? What's your dorm like? What's your freshman housing experience been like? Yeah, so there's quite a different option, a um, few options for freshmen um, here on campus, but I chose the more central one, um, which is Warren Towers. So um, it's one of the biggest dorms actually in the country. And um, I chose that through uh, the, through the applica through housing application. And for my roommate, actually, um, 
BU actually makes a Facebook post for its incoming class. So if mine was BU 2022, and on that, a bunch of different students posted a bio, what they were interested in. So I messaged a couple of different people and just trying to see if we got along and we were going to be great roommates. And then once I kind of like figured out who I clicked with, then I actually um, submitted a request on the housing application again. And you put the person's name and their ID once they receive one, and then um, it'll work out that way. Yeah, so I actually did um, random roommate, um, and I wanted to live in a smaller dorm, and I wanted to live in a non-freshman dorm. Um, so I live in Kilachan Hall, which is um, on Bay State Road. Um, it's the eastern portion of campus, and I have kind of a unique housing story. Um, I was placed with a junior um, because I um, was put in a non-freshman dorm, um, but it was it's a really nice storm because it has AC and private bathrooms. Um, mm. So what ended up happening is I actually met one of my best friends um, who lived across the hall from me and um, she was placed with a senior. Um, and so what we ended up doing was switching rooms. Um, so my old roommate now lives with her old roommate and we live together. So it actually worked out really well. Um, and it goes to show that even if you do get placed with someone you don't know or if it doesn't work out, you can always have the option to switch. Mm. Now, thinking about residential campus, the next question that we had, very important, food, dining halls, but also what happens if you have a food sensitivity? Mm -hmm. You know, if your diet is gluten-free or if you have food allergies, what's what's food like on campus? I can go. Um, my roommate's actually vegetarian. Um, she never has a problem finding different food options in the dining hall um, as well. In the dining hall at all times, there's a gluten-free station, um, if, that, if you can't eat gluten. Um, and then as well, um, there are different um, restaurants on campus that you can use dining points at. And essentially, for a BU dining plan, you have meal swipes. Um, so you get a certain amount of meal swipes either per the week or for the semester. Um, and then you also get dining points, which you can spend at any of our on-campus restaurants. So for example, we have Starbucks, um, Pinkberry, Panda Express, to name a few. Um, and so if you are struggling to find options in the dining hall, you can always opt for a um, meal plan that has more dining points so you can get food from the restaurants, which will most likely have what you need for your dietary restrictions. Yeah. How's the food on campus? Um, so another thing, um, especially since I live on campus um, full time as a student, one thing I was worried about is if the food wasn't going to be good enough and I just wasn't going to eat. But after touring a few different colleges through my process, um, like I'm actually pretty happy with um, what BU serves. Um, they also do like a lot of student input. So um, if you didn't like something or you want to recommend something, they do accept and they do like to hear us out. And also something I like about the dining halls is that they host different night, um, different types of nights. So, for example, a few weeks ago, they partnered um, with um, a student organization on campus and hosted um, Kids Night. So they um, cooked a lot of different throwback meals, for example, corn dogs <laughs> or um, brownies with um, sprinkles on them or pizza bagels, um, a bunch of throwback <laughs> food. So <laughs> that's really, really cool. In fact, just a thing to add about um, risk dietary restrictions. For example, my friend is gluten-free. Um, she's celiac, so she can't have it at all. And BU actually has its separate kitchen for mm -hmm. snacks. So you, um, people who are gluten-free actually get swipe access to that kitchen inside the dining hall, where it's very it's very sanitary. No one is allowed by but anyone who is gluten-free. All the snacks are closed, and it's a very good um, way to again, um, um, you know, cater to those students yeah. who have different dietary restrictions. Absolutely. One of the questions that just popped up is, what are the clubs like on campus, or what clubs do we have? So I mentioned we have a lot. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned Splash, how you actually find different clubs. So what clubs are you guys involved in, or are your friends involved in? So let's start with Lisa. So um, currently, I am in an all-female a cappella group called Cordially Yours. Um, it's one of my favorite parts about being a BU student. Um, clubs are super, super important to your college experience, no matter where you go. Um, but at BU, we have close, you say close to 500 clubs on campus. Um, so there's bound to be something that you're interested <laughs> in. 
Um, so, and I would also say that it's super important being a BU student because BU is so big and sometimes it can feel overwhelming, but having a club to go to really makes the school feel a whole lot smaller. And mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how many of your club members you will see just walking down the street. Yeah, that's a good point. What about you? What do you do? So I'm in a couple different clubs. So my first one, so I am Hispanic, so I'm in Alianza Latina. So it's um, just like a weekly meeting where students um, from with a Hispanic background, but you don't just have to be Hispanic. You can, anyone is welcome to join. You just go. We have a different themes every night. We play games. It's just a great way to get to know other people and have that um, diversity here on campus, which is, which is I really love here at BU. And another club I'm in is, since I am a pre-med student, I'm in um, Global Medical Brigades. So um, it's a club that's designated to help um, international countries, third world countries, um, gain more knowledge about health and what it's like to um, practice safe medicine. So actually twice a year um, we go on a trip um, either to Africa or Central America where we help and um, put up health clinics and actually um, inform different people around the world what it's like um, to be safe and be healthy. Yeah. So the next question we had was more of an academic question. So whether or not you can major in two different schools within BU. You guys are just first year students, so you haven't done that yet, but you can. So what's more common would be for students to double major within one school or college. You always come in as an incoming first year student with one academic program. Then you can start adding them usually at the end of your freshman year, typically when you're a sophomore. You can double major within your individual school or college. Or what you can do is you can major between two different schools. Um, you can always change your mind, switch schools, major between two different schools. It's more common, though, to have a double major within one school. But you can also do something like a major and a minor as well so minoring outside your individual school and you can always take classes within all the different schools at BU because you're a BU student so even though our organizational structure is by school and college all the classes when you're registering are open to you to register for uh, so our next question is a very <laughs> topical very seasonal question and we do have I would say both sides of the spectrum we have an East Coaster we have a West Coaster what's winter like in Boston so um, coming from California, <laughs> our winter is anytime it gets below 70 degrees. <laughs> but here at um, BU or in Boston in general, it's been pretty cold lately. But I say that I've been, I mean, the first time it got below like 30 degrees, it was definitely quite a change. <laughs> I didn't want to leave my dorm. But um, actually, like you just need like a, a winter jacket, some gloves, a scarf, and you'll be fine. It's not that bad. And all of our buildings do have... Um, a heating system so anytime I'm in a building I just can't wait to get into a classroom <laughs> because we're all um, have heaters so um, I don't think it's that bad it's also not snowed that much mm, so if true. I ever do this again I'll let you know again <laughs> but so far it hasn't been that bad it's been pretty cold but it's not too terrible okay so what about our New England native well <laughs> I have a lot to say about winter um, so I've lived here in Massachusetts my entire life um, winter is not that bad um, there, I do, I do like to joke one time in fifth grade, um, we measured the amount of snowfall in the year based mm -hmm. on, um, Shaquille O'Neal's height. Um, it <laughs> actually did surpass his height at one point, um, which was pretty funny. Um, but I, I also have to say, um, it did snow in Virginia this past weekend That's true. and we still have no snow on the ground. So it's, it's not like we have super extreme Mm -hmm. winters yeah that's true we also have a campus shuttle if you're cold and you don't like walking around campus it's for free it drives all around our campus and it goes over to the campus or we lock our Fenway campus the Wheelock College of Education and Human Development and also to our medical school um, so there's a shuttle system so you don't have to walk outside if it's too mm -hmm. cold or if it's snowing windy you don't want to go outside you have that shuttle to take care of you so the other question we had was about studying abroad, and you're both first year students, yeah. but are there any study abroad programs you've researched or you're interested in, or do you have some friends who have studied abroad? So um, as for studying abroad, I actually um, am scheduling my appointment for next semester to meet with an advisor for studying abroad, because it's definitely something I want to do. 
And, and as a pre-med student, again, I thought it'd be really um, hard to study abroad and still be on track with my med school requirements. But again, another thing that I love about BU is that they actually make it, um, they have specific programs for pre-med students or people who want to join the, um, the health field where they actually um, send them to accredited universities all over the world that are highly ranked that help you um, to be on track when you get back. And those classes are taken by med school. So I really want to study abroad in Madrid, Spain. Um, they have a great program there and I love the culture. I've been to Spain a couple times and it's I can't wait to go back. Where do you want to go, Lisey? Also Madrid. There you um, go. <laughs> I'm a Spanish major, so I'm absolutely going planning on studying abroad. Um, I have a couple of friends who are going to various places next semester. Um, one is going to Scotland, Ooh. which is pretty cool. Yeah. I'll let you know how that goes. Yeah. If you guys are, are curious, I would absolutely check out the BU Study Abroad website. There are amazing pictures, and it's really easy to search for a study abroad program. You can search by country, you can search by academic program, and you can even search by when you wanted to study abroad. So if you wanted to study abroad during the semester, if you wanted to study abroad during the summer, it's very easy to search and find programs. Our next question, I like this one. Are there fun things to do in Boston? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what are they? Um, there are so, so many things to do in Boston, and I really like to stress this. Um, since coming here, um, I've visited um, art museums. I've said I've been to the aquarium. Um, I actually, this past weekend, went to um, the Boston Ballet's um, performance of the Nutcracker, mm -hmm. which was awesome um there's a ton of places to go eat um there's this place um called faneuil hall market which is basically just this huge like hall filled with restaurants um and yeah there's so much shopping like literally anything you want to do you can probably do it in boston what do you like to do in boston so something my friends and i like to do is go to different malls or shopping areas around boston <laughs> so we do a bunch of research and find out and where to go and we just hop on the T again, the subway system and just go. And something we did um, do a lot at the end of the year is just randomly go on the, the T and just get off on a random stop and just kind of explore the area around it. Especially I come from um, a beach town. So it was either like hiking, um, biking or kayaking or surfing. There wasn't like a lot of diversity of other things to do. So especially at a city, it's really great. I've, even with your BU um, ID card, you have free entrance to the Museum of Fine Arts. So it's a really cool thing when they have new exhibits. They just had a, they just, they still have a cool Winnie the Pooh mm -hmm. one. Yeah. So it's really fun. There's, and you can graduate BU in four years and you still wouldn't have done everything there is fun yeah. thing there is to do in Boston. So that's what I love about also coming to such a cool city. Yeah. Boston is a city of college students. So always show your student ID because you can probably get a student discount yeah. or get stuff mm -hmm. for free. College students love stuff for free. Oh, here's a good question. So you have one semester under your belt. Do you guys have a favorite professor yet? Yes. Oh, okay. Who's your favorite professor? So my favorite professor is actually my writing professor. So in all of um so that's my writing class where we only have 19 students in it, which is really cool. And my writing, what I really like about my writing professor is that she genuinely cared about us. It wasn't like um, what sometimes you hear what people have to say about college, like your professors won't care about you. They won't even know your name. But my writing professor really took the time out of her day to try to get to know us. And if we needed help with anything, she was always there to help us. If we were going through something tough and need an extension, have a bunch of exams, she was always there to genuinely hear out our concerns or what we um, had to say about her class. She really appreciated that. And she was sort of like a mother figure to all of us. It was a really safe space to talk about anything we wanted to talk about. So it was really cool. We even celebrated for her birthday in class. We all brought her cupcakes. So was, we got along with <laughs> all of us. So it's good. Do you have a favorite professor yet, Lisey? Um, I have a professor that my favorite professor so far. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Um, so that would be my international relations professor. Um, so I was considering doing a minor in IR at the beginning of the semester, and now I'm pretty sure that I want to do it, and it's mostly because of her, um, because she's so passionate about um, international relations and so smart and put together and like a role model for what I want to be, basically, um, when I graduate from college. Um, so she's really inspired me to stay along the path of international relations. 
Great. The next question that we had was about the student body and what campus is like. You know, how diverse is Boston University? What's the student body like here on campus? Yeah, I would say it's pretty diverse. Um, not only in ethnicity, but also in thoughts. Um, we have people from all over the world. Um, yeah, I've, I've met like such a variety of people, um, cultures. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I came, I come from a high school that was um, like 99% um, white. So I really didn't see a lot of diversity. And that was something I was really scared about for college and something I was really looking forward to in a school. So coming to BU, I'm actually joined the Student Diversity Board, which is also part of admissions. So our goal is to try to um, diversify, increase our diversity here on campus. But it's already like I, um, it's already really great, but I personally don't believe anything can stop being diverse, but um, it is, we are at a really good stance right now, BU. Um, there's a lot of groups on campus. We have the Howard Thurman Center, mm -hmm. which is really big on campus where anybody from any culture, um, any background, ethnic, anything, sexuality can go and find a support group here on campus. And it's a really great place. People just go have conversations. They hold some tea times where you just drink tea and talk to people, get to know them. So um, we, they, people really try to get it, make an effort to increase diversity here and especially like the Student Diversity Board. We're um, actively always trying to um, improve the diversity and make yeah. everyone feel welcome here at BU. Definitely. So do either of you have a job on campus or do any of your friends have jobs? I, yeah, I know people who work in the mailroom and in the library on campus, um, or people who work at our um, hockey stadium, Ooh. Aganis Arena on West Campus. Um, yeah, there's a variety of different jobs that you can do. Yeah, a lot of students might get something called work study as part of their need-based financial assistance package. Um, you would do an on-campus job, maybe something like working in the library. We have students working in the admissions office with us. Um, we're also just being right in Boston. It's very easy to get a job off campus. We also have something called the Quick Jobs Board. So if you don't have room in your schedule to commit to uh, a regular work experience, you can do just like a, a one-time thing where you run errands for someone or you babysit or you help a professor organize their office, things like that. So there's a couple of different ways that you can have employment on campus, but lots of students at BU work on campus. And then our next question, let's see, <gasps> research opportunities mm -hmm. for freshmen specifically. Um, what, what's your experience been like with research so far? So we have something called the Euro program here at BU, which is the Undergraduate Research Opportunity. Yeah. Yes. So um, it's a research opportunity um, in the College of Arts and Sciences and throughout our colleges, too, where you um, pair up with a professor and then you perform some sort of research and you can even be published. And, for example, um, at the beginning of my freshman year, um, normally at any other school or what I heard um, – yeah, as a, um, applying into college and being in college is that you won't really get to do research until you're an upperclassman, but that is um, very false as I actually, um, up through one of my upperclassmen peer mentors through my college, I found about a research opportunity at our medical school with um, Parkinson's patients. So I was really excited and I applied into the program and I actually got in. So I was the only freshman on the team with a whole bunch of upperclassmen. So it was really cool. Um, unfortunately, I did have to decline it because it just didn't work out with my schedule, especially as a first semester student. Um, I didn't want to um, overwork myself, but the opportunity was definitely there and I've actually postponed it to do it um, a different semester. So um, it's you can definitely do research even at like our medical school, like I was going to do as a freshman. So that's something, again, I am so happy about for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have not participated in any research yet, yet but I was doing um, some looking into it and I actually found a position um, that relates to my major where I would help a professor um, translate literature into Spanish, um, which I thought was really cool because I didn't think that there would be any sort of research opportunities for um, someone with a Spanish major. So it goes to show there's a million different opportunities because we're such a large community and um, you don't have to do research that pertains to your major if you don't want to as well. Yeah. So the next question we had is about our campus. One of the things we've talked a lot about is our location. We're right in the city of Boston. We're not a gated campus, so we're really part of the city of Boston. But that brings up a question, you know, is campus safe? What's what's your experience been like in your first semester? 
Um, there's never been a time where I felt um, unsafe personally. Um, BU has an alert system, so um, they will text you um, if there is um, ish any issue in the area. It usually does not pertain to Boston University, um, so we'll get an alert of something in the area. Um, um, so just to like be careful. Um, we also do have our own police department um, situated in West Campus, um, and they you can. I think there are numbers on the back of your mm -hmm. um, BU ID, um, and you can call them at any point um, if you feel unsafe or if you're in a, a bad situation or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, also, around campus, BU has um, call boxes, so it's a mm -hmm. bunch of different blue um, poles that you can see. So at any point while you're walking home in the middle of the night or just in the day, you see something or you feel unsafe, you can um, pick up that phone and it'll alert BUPD and they'll be out in a couple minutes. Also on the back of our ID cards, we have something called the Scarlet Safe Walk. So um, like Lisey was mentioning, if you're coming home late from the library and you just don't feel comfortable walking home alone, we do have um, a police officer will actually come and escort you to your dorm or wherever you are going. So that's something I really like about BU. They genuinely care. And if you ever, I've also never felt unsafe on campus or heard of anyone um, that's felt on, safe on campus, so unsafe. So I, again, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that our Dean of Students office does every semester with the BUPD offices, they conduct safe walks around campus where they walk around campus, make sure all areas are, are well lit, that they're within view of our emergency call boxes. But mostly what students need to pay attention to are common sense things like not leaving your laptop out in the middle of a public area, making sure you're looking both ways before you cross the street. Um, so those are the things that we also recommend students pay attention to as well. So more on campus life questions. How's the gym? <laughs> Have either of you guys gone to the yeah, fitness yeah, and recreation center? Times. Okay. <laughs> um, it's really, really nice. Um, it's full of equipment. Um, there's an Olympic sized pool. There's a lazy river. I've yeah. seen it, it's real. Yeah. Um, that's great. Um, yeah, there's also a variety of different um, exercise classes you can take um, either um, after classes or during your um, school day. Um, so those are PE classes essentially. Um, I'm actually signed up for a Pilates class next semester. Um, yeah, so it's really, really nice um, and it's open to all BU students. Yeah, and also we have a rock climbing wall mm -hmm. um, inside of the, which is also pretty cool. And like um, Lisa was saying also that there's a bunch of different PE classes, uh, specifically for my major, I'm required to do um, a few credits worth of PE classes. So my friend actually, and um, my friend and I, are signed up to do um, an ice skating class next semester, <laughs> which is something we've never done. We went ice skating actually um, on Sunday night, and um, we actually were falling all over the place. But it's something that's just fun, and my friend and I, it's sort of bonding too, and I get some credits out of it, yeah. and it's in my tuition, so right. why not do something You're pretty fun? Racing winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the academic experience class sizes. What has been your average class size so far freshman year? Or maybe think about what your, your smallest class and your largest class yeah. has been like in your first semester. So um, especially as a STEM major, uh, my major is human physiology. So as a first semester, I'm taking a lot of those bio, chemistry courses, psychology. A lot of those can, can have a lot of students since a lot of students, not even from my major, from a lot of different majors, they have to take the same classes as me. But what BU does is they it's separated into different sections. So my writing class is 19 people, but my chemistry lecture is 150, which is still relatively small for such um, a class that has a lot of students in it because the whole chemistry department has around 800 freshmen class taking intro to chemistry, but only 150 in my lecture. And apart from that, they are divided into even smaller sections. So I have a discussion section, which there is around 20 people in my class, and I get to ask questions to um, my professor about chemistry. So it's not just that I'm not understanding things in a lecture and I just can't answer. 
Um, so that's a great way to ask questions. And not only that, but all of my professors do hold office hours um, all the time, especially for chemistry. There's about like 10 different office hours a day with multiple professors where you can go and ask for questions. So personally, I was really worried about, oh, in chemistry, I'm going to be lost. There's going to be 800 people in my class, won't be able to ask questions. But it's actually definitely been the opposite. It may seem like there's a lot of people in your lecture, but they do help you um, with those smaller classes, the discussion classes. So that's pretty good. What about you, Lisi? Um, so uh, my smallest class is probably around 15 people. Um, my biggest class is about 330. Um, that's my international relations um, lecture. And coming into BU, that seemed really overwhelming considering I came from a high school where the student body was about 330 students. Um, so yeah, just sitting in that lecture hall was basically like my entire high school, which seemed super overwhelming. But once again, like we do have the a discussion section, which is only around 20 of the students in the class. Um, and um, our professor is um, always available. Well, not always, but she has office hours. If you have any further questions as well, we do have a online program called Piazza. Um, where you can ask anonymous questions um, and other students can answer or the professor can answer. So if you have like a small question that you um, you don't need to go to office hours for, you can just ask it online and um, somebody will answer for you. Yeah. The average class size at the university is 27 students and our student to faculty ratio is 10 to 1. So it's very low for a large mm -hmm. research university like BU. And about 80% of our courses are capped at 30 students. So the vast majority, especially once you move into intermediate and upper level courses, will be much smaller. But you're guaranteed to have at least one really small class your freshman year, usually mm -hmm. through the writing class, but oftentimes through like a, a language class um, or a very special class. Uh, so classes will always be taught by your faculty as well and then take advantage of things like office hours like our student expert said. So BU I mentioned is a division one school. We have 24 varsity sports. Have either of you attended a sporting event here at BU yeah. and was it fun? Yeah. So my first sporting event that I went to was actually um, our men's hockey team. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was last week. I can't remember. It. So much <laughs> is final season. Final week. So much has happened. But um, our one of our rivals, um, Boston College, we actually um, I'm, I'm, we can't mention their name, but, <laughs> but we actually played them in hockey, um, and it was actually really fun. Our, we actually, I went to both games, so our home game and our away game. So for our home game, it was all the, um, a lot of the students were there. Everyone was cheering. There was prizes. Game. It was really fun. And for the away game, we actually met at BU, um, rode the subway, the T, all the way to Boston College's campus. We were chanting. We were yelling. <laughs> um, they were yelling back. But it was a really, it was a really fun experience. Um, especially I'm not really big into watching sports, but this was definitely a really fun way to show school spirit. So it was really cool. Yeah. Have you been to a hockey game or a different yes, sporting I've event? Been, so the first sporting event I ever went to was a girls soccer um, game my second day of school year. Um, that was really cool. Um, there were, um, there's a band that plays at um, pretty sure all the sporting mm -hmm. events, yeah. and they um, help get the audience super hyped. Um, I've also been to three hockey games. Um, would highly recommend attending a, a BU hockey game. Um, they're so much fun, um, and um, I think it's better than football, personally, because um, <laughs> we don't have a football team, but right. hockey's better anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. It's still really fun. So, yeah. so, so fun. Yeah. 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 So there's a lot of different sporting events to go to. We also have club sports and intramural sports. So most of our students participate in sports through intramural sports, things like broomball. Do you guys, do you guys have friends who play broomball or anyone who's played broomball before? No. Okay. I have friends who play club sports, but not. So broomball is a very fun, unique sport that is our number one intramural sport on campus. It's similar to hockey. It's on the ice skating rink, but you run around in your sneakers and you have a broomstick instead of a hockey stick and there's a playground ball instead of a hockey puck. So you're trying to score goals and it sort of resembles hockey, but it's definitely not hockey. So the next question that we have is more academic in nature. It's what is the BU hub? So for those of you who aren't familiar with the term yet, the BU hub is the new way of talking about and our new way of 
approaching liberal arts and general education at Boston University. So really what we want students to be thinking of is instead of just checking classes off of a checklist, you know, making sure you take something like a natural science class, making sure you're taking a language class. We want students to be much more deliberate and much more thoughtful, thinking about um, skills rather than just the topic area itself. So what do we want students to graduate with when they leave Boston University? We want them to be good critical and analytical thinkers. We want students to have global perspectives. We want students to be able to collaborate with each other. So that's how we approach the liberal arts, and that's what's called the BU Hub right now. So that's how you're going to fulfill your general education requirements at BU. So there's a lot of different ways of fulfilling these classes rather than just the traditional picking classes in different subject areas. You could be taking classes that tackle things like quantitative analysis, and it might be more of a computer science class or it might be more of a liberal arts based class because you're getting those skills in just a different subject area. And we want these classes to be interconnected and so you can fulfill some of them through your major or you can fill some of them just through classes that you're registering to take because they're part of the BU Hub or because they're interesting to you. So it's something that you'll work with um, your academic advisor. They'll help you select your courses over summer orientation as an incoming first year student. And then they meet with you every semester after that. So they'll help you pick classes to fill your major. They'll help you pick classes to look at the BU Hub requirements, but they'll also help you figure out what it is that you want to do if you don't necessarily know what it is that you want to do. Because about 30% of our freshmen come in undeclared and a lot of students end up changing their minds and you have the ability to do that at BU. So you're just in your first semester right now. Have any of you taken a class that might fulfill a hub requirement or not yet? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, I actually, I appreciate the hub in some ways because um, I'm taking a linguistics class right now, intro to linguistics, and it actually counts towards some of the same requirements that a math course would. And um, in any other school, um, there would never be a linguistics requirement, so um, it would have to be separate from all the other requirements. But at BU, it actually does count towards um, my graduation requirements, which is really cool. Okay. And for me, since I'm taking a lot of the chemistry and biology um, sort of related courses in psychology, a lot of them do contribute to the BU Hub. So, for example, there's a section called qualitative analysis. So mm -hmm. that is more your um, like science and math classes. So um, I am starting to accumulate um, BU Hub credits through those classes that do fulfill the science and um, math related um, parts of the BU Hub. Yeah. So the next question we have, because you guys are the student experts, we've talked about living on campus. We've talked about um, residences and things like that. How do you like living in the dorms? Is it your home away from home or did you have to adjust with living with another student? What was it like moving to campus for the first time? Um, for me, it wasn't that hard um, since I live 45 minutes from home. Um, I'm really familiar. I was really familiar with the city of Boston um, before coming here, um, so I felt really comfortable immediately. Um, right now, I'm living with one of my best friends, so our dorm room is sort of like a home away from home. Um, it's a place where I can just chill. I can be super comfortable. Um, they're super convenient because they're right next to all your classes. Um, mine does have a private bathroom, which is super, super <laughs> nice. Um, so I can't complain. Yeah. So um, something that I love about living in the dorms, like I mentioned earlier, um, Warren Towers at BU is the second largest like non-military dorm. So it does house 1,800 students. So that is a lot of people. So chances are a lot of your really close freshman friends live in that building. <laughs> so it's really nice if you have a question on something or just want to hang out. You just, they're um, all the top. There's three different towers that are connected. So you don't have to go outside. So you just go down the elevator, go to your friend's room in a different tower and just spend time with them. We also have the dining hall inside. So again, as a California native, I don't have to leave <laughs> if I don't want to on the weekends, especially when I don't have class because there is a dining hall inside. Um, and also my view is amazing. So I live on the um, on one of the higher floors. So I do get to see the Prudential Tower, which is um, a tall building um, here in Boston. I get to see the Sitgos, the whole Sitgo sign. I get to see Fenway. Um, even if you go up a few more floors on my tower, you actually get to see the players playing um, when there's a game <laughs> at Fenway. So I really love the, um, the dorms. They're not bad in communal bathrooms. 
um, I thought it was going to be um, horrible, but it's not bad. I've never had to wait for a shower. They're always, they get cleaned every day. The trash gets taken out every day. So they're not bad at all. Um, everyone is very respectful, especially my classes are right across the street from my dorm. So I just get across the street and I'm there. So it is very convenient to live on campus. And I highly recommend that you're going to meet a lot of different people. So I, it's, it's really fun, I think, living in a dorm, especially my dorm is like the hangout spot for all my friends. <laughs> so every I'm never alone in my dorm. So it's really fun to just have fun. You get to decorate it, make it your own, make it your home away. It's definitely, you can definitely make it your home away from home if you want to. Yeah, there's a lot of different dorm options as well. So especially as you become sophomore, junior, senior, you might want to get a suite with your friends or an apartment with your friends on campus if you want a little bit more privacy or if you really like that private bathroom. <laughs> uh, there's lots of different dorm types available. And so our next question, this is a really important one. And it is very appropriate for uh, an event thinking about early decision. You guys both applied early decision. So what made you apply to BU? What was it? Why Why did you choose BU? Who wants to go first? Can I pull out my essay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so the reason I chose BU is because something that I was looking forward from um, forward to for a lot of different colleges or universities I was applying to, BU had all of them. So, for example, my major is human physiology, and it's within the Sargent College of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences. So it is a college geared towards more to students who want to join the medical field. And there wasn't there wasn't really a school that I really liked that had the same program or the same opportunities that BU offered. And also, this is um, sort of hard to explain for a student who hasn't been on campus or isn't a student yet. There's so many different activities that BU puts on that are so fun, like Splash, or we have Lobster Night, where BU gives you, at the end of the year, we have a Lobster Night where you get a lobster, you get to crack it open with your friends. It's really fun. It's just, there's so many different events. It's it's And it's a very academic school. Um, it's highly ranked, and it's in the city. So I wanted a city and a really good school in BU, that's BU. And um, so I, that's what I love about BU. Yeah, what about you, Lisi? Um, so I originally was applying to a bunch of colleges super far away from home. Um, I wanted to go somewhere warm, I was sick of winter. Um, <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, so I actually decided that the Northeast is where I wanna be. Um, it's great um in terms of um you know like people with the thinking you know around here um and also um boston is one of my favorite places to be it always has been um and so i definitely definitely wanted to be right in the city because there are so many things you can do there's so many um opportunities um to do with um, jobs um so like after college, um, that's what I was thinking about um, as well, um, specific to BU um, is it was a really big school, but it had a small feel to it. Um, a lot of um, larger universities um, can feel super discombobulated um, and overwhelming because you feel like you don't know anyone. Um, but here, everybody finds their own community, and I could see that just from visiting campus. Like, I could see everybody had their own people, and that's what I was looking for. Yeah. So that is a really great question. And now we are actually going to move on to our last question for the evening. So thank you, everyone, for all of your wonderful questions. The last question, I think, is a great note to end on. What would you both say? the best aspect or maybe the best thing or your favorite thing about BU? And if you might need to think, so there's hard. a lot of really cool things. <laughs> <laughs> but if you had to pick just one, what comes, what comes to mind first? I would say all of the different events that you can attend here. Mm -hmm. They're like just at BU, not even in the city of Boston, just at BU, um, there's always somebody putting on a theater performance, a music performance, um, or there's always like a game going on. So you can go to a hockey game or um, a basketball game or whatever. Um, and so there's always something going on on campus, which I think is super cool. There's tons and tons of activities that you can do. Um, yeah. Um, 
I definitely agree. She actually stole my butt. <laughs> another, another part that I really like about BU um, is the support system provided here. Again, like I'm um, hearing stories from some of my friends who go to um, schools um, as large as BU and hearing their stories. And I'm always like, wow, I'm so lucky that I haven't had to go through all of that because I have this support system. If I'm having trouble in chemistry, there's always not only office hours, but tutors. If I'm stressed for finals, there's probably some event going on where some organization or housing in general is providing hot chocolate to students. Or Mm -hmm. one time I was having a really rough exam week and um, someone slipped hot chocolate and a little bag with hot chocolate they actually put on our door with a nice note was actually um, the housing, BU housing. So it's just like knowing that um, even though you go to a school with so many people where you won't ever meet everyone who goes to your school, especially like she said her school was small. My graduating class had 19 people. I knew everyone <laughs> in my class since I was in seventh grade. So um, it's definitely the fact knowing that someone is always caring for you, even if it's your writing professor or um, a student organization, something like that. It's actually um, really cool. You can always mm-hmm. find someone to support you. Yeah. I think that is a wonderful way to wrap things up. Thank you both for, for sharing your experiences. Good luck with finals. We're in the <laughs> middle of finals week. Um, and I did want to let you guys know that you can stay connected with Boston University through social media. Um, you can follow us on lots of different um Social media accounts, they're all run through BU. You can ask questions there. You can email us questions. Thank you again for all of your questions tonight. Um, We really appreciate it. We appreciate your time and your attention. And I just wanted to thank our students again. Uh, And so good luck, everybody. Good luck with your applications. Good luck with your own finals if you're going through finals right now. Um, And again, anytime you have questions, always let us know. Thank you very much.